What is happening, guys? Cowboy here. We're back. Heading all the way down. Like, really, they need to build a, uh... <clears throat> there needs to be, like, a bridge. Something that I can use to get over to this thing faster. I'm really tired of having that. Actually, I think I'm going the wrong way. I don't think it's out of here. Let's see. I think they want me to go when she said tower. She probably meant, like, a thing that's super low. No, wait. Path. Star's there. Star now. Watchtower. South Watchtower. North Watchtower. Why does it say Outer Path? There's nothing on the Outer Path. Star must be bugged. Others? Hmm? Where'd that question come from? Well, after hearing that Velvet, Kamawana, and Eleanor all lost their parents, I just got curious. My mother was a strict, frightening woman, but she died a long time ago. I see. I have no parents either, but the wicked witch who took me in said I was born from a peach that floated down the river. Coming from you, I'd almost believe that. A and you, Aizen? We Malakim are formed from untainted mana. Sometimes humans are reborn as Malakim, but they retain no memory of their previous lives. In other words, we don't have blood relations like humans do. I see. By the time I was aware of anything around me, I was already tethered in being called number two. I suppose having no mother means I don't have any memories before that. I told Medissa that losing a mother is painful. But I can't know how painful it is. Oh, Go officer. easy on him, Aizen. He's just a kid. I'm just telling it like it is. But listen to me, Lafayette. said. You can share deep connections with other people, even if you don't have a biological family. Malakim, too, can form precious bonds. True friendships, even family. That's right. Your words wouldn't have stopped Medissa if they weren't true in your heart. You really think so? I'm sure of it. It's far better than being a witch born from a peach. Nonsense! There's no nobler way to be born! I have an everlasting friendship with a dog, a monkey, a pheasant, and Bienfu. I hope he's right. Well, in the off chance that it's the... can have familial ties, but what makes you and your sister siblings if you're not related by blood? Well, a very long time ago, I was born into this world from an Earth Pulse point up on a sacred mountain. I remained in that place for a long while, and then one day, she was born from the very same Earth Pulse point. Before we knew it, we had wound up living together under the same roof. Are two Malakim always siblings if they come from the same Earth Pulse point? No. The other Malakim were born there, but I never felt like they were my family. But something, I don't know what, was different with her. If she was sad, I'd feel sad. And if I was happy, she'd be happy too. She can be abrasive, 
But when she smiles, it's like nothing else. I swore to myself that whatever happened, I would protect her. I made a pendant from a stone on that sacred mountain and gave it to her as a lucky charm. Of course, she just wears it as a necklace. And your pendant? Did she give that to you? She had the same idea I had. She made the pendant herself and gave it to me as a good luck charm. Without either of us having mentioned a word of it beforehand, we each gave each other pendants in the same shape on the very same day. That's when I really knew that what I had felt all along was true. We were brother and sister. Is that her in the picture? Yeah. It's a self-portrait she drew for me on the day I left home. Did you draw her a picture of yourself? No. I don't exactly have an artistic side. Well, I'm sure that if you looked inside her pendant, you'd find a portrait of the person who matters most to her. I hope so. Yeah, and it would be nice if it was you. <laughs> Magalu, gotta come in to throw that shade. Alright, what do you got for us, Grimoire? Ah, there you two are. Hi, teacher. Have you made progress deciphering the book? I have indeed. It turns out there was a second counting song. I've already transcribed it. Would you read it aloud for us, child? Okay. Um... When the eight malevolences overflow, in the culmination of mankind's despair, and Nomenot will bring an end to all peoples and restore them to time immemorial. Four Empyreans shall wield a wrathful sword and cleave the great devourer, two asunder to sleep beneath the earth as scarlet moonlight illuminates the evil. The nameless Empyrean hath one heart, the nameless Empyrean hath one body. Oh, yet more delightful material to keep us awake at night. If I'm understanding this right, it's discussing the specific nature of Enominat? That's what I believe, yes. When the eight malevolences overflow in the culmination of mankind's despair, Enominat will bring an end to all peoples. So, when the world is at peak malevolence, Enominat will use that power to bring an end to all. Is that it? He's going to wipe out all of humanity? Is that what the Abbey is after? Is that why they've been trying to bring back Enominat? No. Artorius is not that kind of man. His two primary ideals are the many over one, and the restoration of order through will and reason. He sacrificed Lofi to protect this world, not to eradicate it. You mean that's who he is as far as you know, yeah? People change, Velvet. Perhaps the Shepherd gave up hope. Maybe he lost faith in mankind. Fools prone to sin, endlessly generating malevolence. He's not like that. If that's all true, then what point was there in Lofi's death? Is there anything else in that book? Yes and no. This copy itself is incomplete. There ought to be further pages, but they're missing. For now, I've done all I can. There must be an original somewhere, right? Without it, I doubt the Abbey would be plotting Enominat's revival. We can be sure they have complete understanding of their Empyrean's nature. But this was the only copy in the Royal Villa. If the original is out there, who knows where it could be? <sighs> it's getting pretty late. Why don't we call it a day? Yeah, let's get some rest. Or... The Abbey doesn't understand a Nomenach's true nature. Don't realize that he's just gonna wipe out the world. Hey, Lofi said! Medessa let me sleep in her bed last night! She's warm for a snake lady! That's great! She's gonna help me take a bath now! You should come join us too! What? Uh, I couldn't! It's okay, I don't mind at all. Um, I... Hey, Kamalana, did you know? Dial started to grow a brand new tail. 
Wow, really? I want to see? He's up at the observation tower. Let's go see! Modessa, you too! Uh, all right. But don't run, or you'll trip. She got them tickle bitties. <sighs> Thanks, Eleanor. I appreciate it. <laughs> Having some girl trouble, my little Malik? So he's my Malik. I'm just glad Kamawana and Medissa are starting to feel better. Yeah, they both still have a long way to go, but it's such a relief to see them smiling. We've got bigger things to worry about. Hurry up and locate the next Earth Pulse point. Right, okay. Must you always be so blunt, Velvet? I must, in fact. We're up against the Abbey here, and sooner or later they'll find this place. That's true, but still. Do we go find another hideout? No, we'll keep on the offensive. We'll capture the remaining Therians before the Abbey finds us. As a swordsman, I can respect that mindset. I'm not so sure we could hold this place anyway. And we've got no obligation to. I found another Earth Pulse point. It's in the eastern part of East Gand, I think. But that's... All right. We're headed for East Gand. Then our first stop should be Port Taliesin. Where's your tail at, Dial? Hey! That's where I cut it off. This island's really something. No way I'd want to go to prison here, but it'd make a great hideout. If I'm gonna be left in charge of this place, I'll turn it into the best hideout ever. You're in charge? Someone has to look after this place while you're all running around. Maintaining the ships in the base, watching the Prince and Medissa, keeping Kamuana company. I'll keep this place running ship shape, so that you all can focus on looking for the Therians. But those are just odd jobs anyone can do. You're a navigator. Isn't that a waste of your talents? You dolt! These are important tasks! Someone's gotta do it! We've got another navigator. But is there anyone besides me that could handle all of this by themselves? Besides, ever since I lost my tail, my balance has been off. The seasickness is killing me! That's your story and you're sticking to it? Tell the truth. You don't want to come because you're afraid you'll be hurt again. Uh, no. That's not it at all. <laughs> When mankind's despair reaches its pinnacle, Inominat shall reach out and bring an end to all. So that song bothers you too? No matter how many times I read it, I don't see any good in it. Understanding that ancient tongue is difficult, right? Perhaps there's another interpretation? Maybe the end to all actually means an end to all human suffering, for example. That is a possibility. But we're far too lacking in material to know anything for sure. We need the other half of that book. Or some other text on the Nominat. We don't have the time to search for it. Wouldn't even know where to start looking. And don't forget that that book is just a copy. Whoever transcribed it might have made an error, too! That's an unexpectedly sharp insight coming from you. I'm an expert at errors! <laughs> when Miss Mogilu made me copy magic tomes for her, I did it pretty half-heartedly. Didn't that cause a lot of problems? Well, when she tried to cast a spell from one of the tomes, the spell exploded in her face. It's really her own fault, though. She told me to copy 100 books in three days! That's impossible! Oh, how cruel! Cruel is right! That witch is a real devil, I tell you! A slave driver! Bien Fu? Let's go somewhere a little more private, shall we? <laughs> Miss Mogilu! Hush now. There's no need to worry. I'll make it a half-hearted punishment. <laughs> Grimoire always looks like she never wants to do any work. But despite all her grumbling, when she starts a job, she gets it done. And quickly, too. She's frank, but she still takes care not to say anything to hurt anyone's feelings. I have to say, I, I like that in a woman. It's charming. Well, sorry if I'm inconsiderate and charmless then. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. You're all still so young and have led different lives. 
Can't fault you for being you. Well, if you're saying we lack a certain air of maturity, I might not 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 disagree. That's for sure. It's true Lord Artorius has scolded my lack of composure at times. Although I do get the impression that Grimoire has been dependable like that since she was young. And it's a good impression at that. Old Grim's been that way since the day she was born. I hate to admit it, but her combination of insightful words and deadpan expression has charmed the hearts of many a Moloch. At her peak, she had a fan club 8,848 members strong, and her dinner shows would sell out the day the tickets went on sale. Malakim came by the droves to doze off listening to her live readings of ancient books. Wow! I had no idea she was so popular. Yeah, she's even a regular feature in Who's Who Among Norman. Now that I think about it, I could see how a person could interpret her lethargy as patience and her vague dispassion as maturity and poise. Compared to her, I'm just... <sighs> Were you just trying to imitate her? <sighs> No, I didn't mean to. Whether you meant to or not, that kind of felt like her just now. I can see it in you, waiting to be awakened. That sophisticated charm. Me? Sophisticated and charming? I don't know. Try talking like her. You know how she lets her sentences trail off. This is your make-or-break moment here. Uh, all right. I think I know what you mean. Here goes nothing. Oh... What do you think, Laffy said? Do I sound like her? It feels a little off, but you're definitely doing it, I think. Aw, uh, you don't have to grow up, Madame Eleanor! You're cute just the way you are! Uh, you stay out of this, Bianfu! Alright, let's finally mosey out. We'll save the other skit for another time. Did he say I was going to Talison? I have not been over there yet. Oh, well. All the places for my ship. <laughs> it's sour. So you've kept your sense of taste. In my dreams I have. Nowhere else. Does that make this a dream? It would have to be, wouldn't it? After all... I devoured you. That's right. Don't you go forgetting it. How could I ever forget it? The taste of your... <gasps> How could I ever... Looks like the fog's rolling in. Yep. Eleanor, there's something I want to be sure we get perfectly clear. Um, all right. What is it? Luffy said is not your little Moloch. What? That's all you wanted to say? You realize he doesn't belong to you either, right? Indeed I do. Luffy said's his own person, and not anyone else's. Y you're right. Malakim aren't just tools to be used by exorcists as they pleased. I'll be more careful not to forget that. Good, as long as we're on the same page. <laughs> Since we're on the subject of reminders, you haven't forgotten our little bet, have you, Velvet? You mean the 100 gold on whether I'd break? No, I haven't forgotten. A word of caution. People can fight against pain, but they can't fight against happiness. If you're keen on winning our bet, I'd steer clear of ill-fitting dreams. Sorry to break it to you, but all I have anymore are nightmares. The fog's cleared. Good thing we didn't wind up getting lost in it. Of course we didn't. Who do you think is running this ship? A bunch of shameless rogues who are very good at shameless roguery. Damn straight. But it's strange. These waters don't usually see much fog. Anyway, we made it to Palace, City of the East. Get east.
Whoa! It's like a castle. I mean, not really. This used to be the base of operations for a rich trading family. When trouble came knocking, they were ready for it, to say the least. Wow! They must have had a lot of enemies. But that was a long time ago. Nowadays, it's just another town in the middle of nowhere. But even so, to us, it was the big city of our dreams. You know this area well. I grew up near here. Keep on going, and you'll run into a ball. My home village. Then... Letharian is... Yeah, somewhere in my village. Is that okay? No one will know me there. Everyone I knew, I already devoured. Dun, dun, dun. I like how Velvet leaves out the part that they were all, uh... They were all demons. Makes it sound like she's just going around devouring people. Corpse, consumer of caravans, noxious creep, Deval, Frigal Ice Caps. I didn't see him in Frigal Ice Caps. How did I not see him? Increase the drought rate of equipment worn by the character on normal mode or higher. I'm gonna have to go get him. Probably do it on the way back. Uh, Deval Forest, Cliffside Path. These are new areas, but Deval Forest I've been to. By uh, healing arts used. Okay. Oh wow, I need that. How'd I kill that? Oh well, I'll hunt those down in a different episode. Oh, I, I mean, I, I wonder. Wait, let me see something. Did I just sail back out? Sail back out? Kill those things right now? Can I do that? Is that a possibility? I don't think it is. Maybe. We'll find out. I don't think so. I don't even see an, an entrance to get in the boat. Yeah, something is providing you. Womp womp. Alright, let's go get our exploration on. So. Okay, and now dismantle. Enough for most people. Let's see something next. to go to. A couple of different ones you can use. You could use one of the waistcoats. That 
much. I think that'll be fine. I don't need to worry about it. Since you're good on this, since you can start doing that. We're done this. Well, I'm already done with the item shop, though. I'm not going to run through them more. Ah, oh, damn! I forgot today was the day Nico was coming. I missed out on buying that. <gasps> That's too bad. I wish she'd just open up a shop here. You'd think it would be easier than always having to make the long trek from a ball. I heard she doesn't want to leave the village because she's waiting for her missing friend to return. What are you talking about? A ball's nothing but a ruin. What? Well, you're a morbid young woman. Sure, the place was hit pretty bad by a demon a few years ago, but it's not like it's abandoned. Many of the villagers were hurt, but thanks to Lord Artorius, nearly all of them survived in the end. That can't be... It certainly is. In fact, there's a girl from there, Nico, who comes here once a week to sell things. Just yesterday, my camp velvet? Okay, we got What's going on? That's what I'd like to know. Four treasure chests around this town somewhere. That festival it sure was. I, I don't love care, child. <laughs> anyway, tell yes. Yeah. What do you think you'll uh <laughs> Nico? Like, I saw everyone turn into freaking uh werewolves. This looks like a place I'll find some of those treasure chests. Based on those three, it's down here and I overlooked it. Gotta be somewhere. Semi but I want to go. I'm definitely going to be going to the uh, old village in the next episode. I want to see. It's, everyone should be dead. It's got to be somewhere over here. Alright, well let's wrap up here for now. Next episode, I'm guessing we're going to go to our own village and find out the hell our Tori has turned into Ethereum. But either way, make sure to stay tuned and we will catch you guys then. Bye.